Joy is not a word that usually comes up when we talk about politics, campaigns, or running for office. I spent most of my time before I ran for governor worrying about the pain it would cause my family, my businesses, and my reputation, not the joy that we would experience in the journey. Joy is not a word that drives people to stand for free speech, for the Second Amendment, for tax cuts, or well-maintained roads. Or is it? Isn't there tremendous joy in moments while driving I-70 to ski fresh powder at A Basin? Isn't there joy in learning to defend yourself and your family to be secure in knowing you can stop someone from invading your home? Isn't there joy in seeing a child that was struggling in school thrive because school choice gave them a better option? I believe there is joy in speaking freely about topics that are forbidden in other areas of the world, and joy in knowing that you are blessed enough to live in a place where you can experience freedom. There is certainly joy to be found in politics. I know that now. In the Bible, the book of Romans says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Joy through trials, through being tested, through learning to be steadfast. Now, that is politics. At its core, politics is simply us very flawed humans searching for a way to live together, work together, raise families together in pursuit of joy and happiness. Ah, where have we heard that buzz before? Oh yeah, our own declaration of independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Life, liberty, happiness, joy. A fundamental in politics, at least in America, is about preserving our unalienable right to pursue happiness, to experience joy. But let's be clear, our unalienable right is not joy itself, it's to pursue it. And that is something we must remember. The beauty of individuality lies not in the destination of happiness, but in the journey to joy. And it's messy. Oh my goodness, is it messy, the journey to joy. Just like running a campaign or fighting for a ballot initiative you care about. It's not linear. The ups and downs can make you dizzy. A good debate, a bad media interview, a bloody primary battle, a big donor investment, a handshake from a veteran wishing you well, the hatred from a post on social media, the waving of your sign by a young child smiling big, pulling not in your favor, the kiss of a fluffy pup on the campaign trail. Sure, it's a roller coaster. It's definitely a roller coaster, isn't it? The journey, being in the ring, being in the battle to reclaim and defend a life full of joy for folks across Colorado, that now is the pursuit of happiness. That's the ultimate fight. There's so much joy in taking that on and being the chosen warrior to speak for the just cause or just people. So yes, there is definitely, most definitely, joy in politics. And now that the dust is settling after the election, I can see it now. There was joy in stopping to pet every pup on the campaign trail, a rule we had from the team from day one. I have the pictures to prove it. There was joy in getting to know some amazing leaders and learning from them. Sarah Huckabee Sanders, Dennis Prager, Glenn Youngkin, Tulsi Gabbard, Hank Brown, Brad Parscale, Arthur Brooks, to name a few. There was joy in giving a knockout speech and feeling the crowd connect and celebrate. Joy in training and technique and policy for hundreds of hours to debate a supposed pro, then even more joy in beating him. There was joy in having my children, my family, and my friends right by my side in Alamosa, Sterling, Fruta, and downtown Denver. There was joy in seeing children get engaged and inspired across our beautiful state, waving signs at our rallies and cheering us in parades. There was joy in driving the dirt roads through rural Colorado to have a homemade pie at a local diner. Joy in meeting the friendly dairy cows who feed our families in Fort Morgan. Joy in climbing to the top of a power plant in Craig and seeing the flames burn to produce energy for all of us across the state. Joy in plucking a ripe peach from the tree at an orchard in Fruta or a watermelon from Rocky Ford. Joy in giving a voice to parents across the state who'd never been involved in politics before, but just wanted a good future for their kids. I saw joy in the eyes of folks at our rallies as we were finally coming together 
getting our word out, getting people engaged. But the thing about joy is that it walks right alongside pain and despair. I saw so much pain in the eyes of mothers and fathers who lost their children to fentanyl poisoning or a school shooting. I heard pain in the voices of farmers and ranchers and energy workers as they told me stories of their family businesses and ranches that had been in their families for generations being devastated by bad policy at the Capitol in Denver. My heart is still heavy that we didn't have enough time or money to get these stories out to more voters or to swing our state towards prosperity. We are in a lot of pain right now in Colorado. It's sad, it's exhausting, and it's terrifying that voters chose to keep going down this path. But without dark clouds in our lives, we would never know the joy of a rainbow or sunshine. I know now from this journey what needs to be done to win again. I know now how to play this game. And my job now is to teach you, to train you, to be prepared. To tell you how we can work together to have joy again in Colorado. To win. And if you look at history, we know as sure as the sun comes up each day, the political pendulum will swing. Yes, it will swing. Look at the history of our presidential races. Beginning in the early 1930s, we moved from Roosevelt and Truman to Eisenhower and Kennedy and Johnson to Nixon and Ford to Carter to Reagan and G.H.W. Bush to Clinton to G.W. Bush to Obama and then Trump to Biden. The same in Colorado. It's just been a longer swing. Between 1972 and 2004, Colorado gave its electoral votes to the Republican presidential candidate in all but one election. However, since Barack Obama took Colorado's nine electoral votes in 2008, the state has been a Democratic stronghold, going blue in every election since. But Colorado's pendulum, it will swing back, and we need to be prepared when it does. Our ground game, our data, our donors, They need to be prepared, and we need to capitalize when it's time. The harder the party in power swings their way, the quicker the rebound the other way. And Polis and the Democrats, whoo, they are swinging hard left right now on radical energy policy, stripping us of our gun rights, our parental rights, abortion until a baby's birth date, taking away our Tabor refunds, driving property taxes through the roof, making Colorado the capital of crime and drugs. They are extremists way too extreme for Colorado voters. And the awakening is coming and we need to be ready. I challenge you all to find joy in the preparation, in the work of winning back our state, one county, one precinct at a time, to find joy amidst the pain of what's happening here. You know, in some ways, my life has been one of extremes too, intense pain to intense joy. And maybe that's what's prepared me for this journey in politics and why I keep getting back up and fighting again. I was shattered when I lost my first husband by it in a plane crash when I was 27. It was incredibly hard and painful when the market crashed in 2008, almost taking my franchise business and my franchisees down with it. I was terrified when I was told I had a brain tumor and had to have brain surgery amidst a global pandemic just a few years ago. And I was heartbroken when we lost the election last fall. But joy has also showed up as often as pain in my life building the largest pet care franchise in the country from scratch. What a better way to bring you joy than furry friends finding joy playing at our camps. Then finding love again and having my amazing children, winning the CU Regent race and being a regent for six years, fighting the battle in higher education and being chosen to fight the battle for governor by our own party. What I hope you'll learn from my story is that it's the journey that matters. It's getting back up after getting knocked down that is the measure of a life lived well. A governor's race didn't define me. A brain tumor didn't define me. Failing at a couple businesses before making one go big, it didn't define me. It's why I'm putting one foot in front of the other each week to do these podcasts, to stay in the fight, to support all of you, to walk alongside you. It's in the coming back that we grow, that we get stronger, that we win. Failure is not an option for us at this special moment in history. The only way they win is if we stop fighting. I believe that's why Polis spent tens of millions of dollars against me and why the media attacked me so viciously, because they wanted to destroy my desire to fight back, to ever come back, and to help Colorado come back. 
well, they must not know my story very well. They must not know me very well. It's how I roll. It's in my DNA. It's in my story. It's in Colorado's story. It's in your story. We have to stay engaged, even after a big bump in the road. I'm not going anywhere, and I need you all to stay in the fight with me. We are in this together. I know our conservative movement in Colorado and our country are going through some bumps in the road, but I promise it's part of the journey to give up on the good to go for the great. I've lived it over and over. Michael Jordan said, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game's winning shot and missed. I failed over and over and over again in my life, but that's why I succeed. Failure has never stopped me from fighting, and I hope it will never stop you either, especially when we have so much to fight for. Our kids, our grandkids... I'm a Colorado kid who lived her American dream, and now I want to make sure our kids and grandkids can do the same. I'm a parent, like many of you, that loves Colorado and a proud American who loves her country, and I'm not ready to give up on our founding father's dreams. I hope you're not either. I am living proof of all that you can do, all our country can do, all that we are fighting for, but I'm also proof that the most important thing you can do when you get knocked down is to get back up. Even if you're wobbly, get back up. Stay in the ring, no matter the pain, the humiliation, or the loneliness. Just show up. Put one foot in front of the other and take one battle on at a time. So my advice to this amazing community that we're building through Unleashed and that we built during the campaign is this. This new conservative movement in Colorado, stay together, stay the course, band together, We have to work through our differences and hold the line. Let's embrace the bumps in the road and keep taking risks to build something really great. We're going to win some and we're going to lose some, but it's time to start winning. It's time to turn things around. Your children and grandchildren are depending on you to stay in the fight. Keep your eye on the prize, which is their future. You know, I love a scene from the old movie Parenthood with Steve Martin, not the new series, the old movie. And I may have mentioned this before on the podcast, but I love this story. And it keeps playing again and again in my head. His wife's 90-year-old grandma gives some sage advice towards the end of the movie when she says, You know, when I was 19, Grandpa took me on a roller coaster. Oh? (laughs) Up, down, up, down. Oh, what a ride. What a great story. I always wanted to go again. You know, it was just interesting to me that a ride could make me so, so frightened, so scared, so sick, so, so excited and, and so thrilled all together. Some didn't like it. They went on the merry-go-round. That just goes around, nothing. I like the roller coaster. You get more out of it. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll be seeing you in the car. In my life and yours too, now is the moment to choose the past less traveled, to choose the roller coaster, to find joy in the ride, the ride back to freedom for Colorado and America. And oh, what a ride it will be. Next up, I wanted you to hear from the four children who were on the front lines of the entire campaign and got to see joy and pain. I want them to tell you a little bit about the joy they experienced on the pain and encourage you to get your kids involved in politics. Talk to them. Engage them. Don't avoid it. Teach them how important it is to stay involved and be good citizens. Hey, everyone. I'm Tori. I'm Heidi's oldest daughter. I'm 27. Um, I have so many amazing memories from the campaign trail. Honestly, just all the incredible people that I got to meet, um, places I got to go. For those of you who don't know, I actually moved from Portland the August uh, before my mom announced um, Portland, Oregon. I lived in Oregon for eight years. So it was such an amazing way to reacclimate myself to Colorado and just um, refamiliarize myself with everything here. Um, and it was, yeah, just a great way to get back to my Colorado roots. So some of my favorite memories, I'd say, were definitely 
Um, the Pueblo debate was a great one. Uh, I don't think she mentions this in the episode, but one of my favorite things that we did was after every debate, uh, we'd find a parking lot. The whole team would meet there because um, usually they were in remote locations and we'd crack open some Coors Light and we'd celebrate what a great job she did. So those were some of my favorite memories for sure. Um, the Pueblo one, she just crushed it and was the first one. So it was definitely one of my favorite ones. Um, you probably saw me somewhere along the campaign trail with my golden retriever puppy, Poppy. Um, it was so fun bringing her everywhere. I mean, who doesn't love a golden retriever? So that was definitely a highlight. And, um, I'd say some of my favorite places that we went and just the general people in those places, um, were Westcliff, Colorado. I just was blown away by the people there and how beautiful it was, the mountain range, the ranches, um, and then we actually drove from Westcliff to Alamosa um, that night after an event. And that drive, we ended up taking a complete back way off the beaten path, um, just completely dirt roads in the fall. And it was just breathtakingly beautiful. We were listening to John Denver the whole way. And it was that was definitely a core memory from the campaign I'll never forget. And then once we were in Alamosa, we... We had a great event, and then the next morning, we decided right before we snuck out to go, I think we were going to Walsenburg, and then we had some events in Pueblo later that, that day. Um, one of my favorite things that we did was go to this little diner, and I know my mom raves about all the diners she got to eat around Colorado, but this one was one of my favorites. They had the best cinnamon roll I've ever had in my life, just melted butter on top, and great coffee, and we just sat around a table with a bunch of farmers and ranchers who've lived in Alamosa basically their whole lives and talked to them about um, just old stories and things that, you know, we could do to improve the state, and it was just a really humbling, beautiful experience. Um, but yeah, most of the time I was behind the scenes, um, taking pictures, working on social media, communications. Um, I was not on the campaign trail for a large part of it because um, I was trying to take a step back to help myself heal from Lyme disease, as some of you may know. Um, but once I went in, I went in full throttle and got to go on all the trips and uh, document all the things. So it was just a really magical experience, and I'm really grateful for it. And um, to have my whole family go through it, the kids, um, the docs, and work with so many people on the team that I've known for a long, long time was really cool. Hi, I'm Holly. I'm Heidi's daughter, and it was so fun to be a part of the campaign trail. My favorite part was meeting all the dogs, especially at the parades. All the tiny ones, all the big ones, all the fluffy ones. It was so much fun. Hi, I'm Jenna Ganahl. I'm Heidi Ganahl's daughter, and I'm 11. What I liked on the campaign trail was when I was my, my mom's helper, and I got to help with her stuff. And when we always went to the parades, and... It was fun to do them, and we also, in this one parade, we handed out balloons, and it was like a bunch of haystacks, and it was very fun to just do that, and also the food on the campaign trail was good. Jeff's kiss. Hi, I'm Jack. I'm 11, and this is what I liked about the campaign trail. <laughs> uh, I liked going into the Secret Service car uh, with bulletproof bulletproof glass and I also like the parades where we where we threw candy at all the kids and stuff like that and uh, another thing that I liked is that uh, we went to the wide open saloon to celebrate my mom winning the primary. <laughs> <laughs> 